I was five and a half months pregnant. Everybody said spotting was regular for pregnant women, but obviously I didn't want to take any chances, so I went to the ER. They actually said to me, we can't let you go home. You are dilated, we need to hospitalize you immediately. I was two weeks shy of the 24 week period before they consider uh, a baby viable. And I had to hold on minimum for two weeks. The night that this happened, she started to have trouble breathing. And I panicked and I went into the hallway and I started yelling for anyone that would come and help us. And then they saw that a heart rate started to drop. Baby's heart rate started to drop. And they said, we need to do emergency C-section. She was basically in a coma. They said, there's very little we can do but hope. There is one hospital that can help, and that was New York Presbyterian. When they called us, they were really just calling for help because there was nothing left to do. I called Dr. Baquetta. I said, uh, Matt, get in your car. And then I hung up. I activated the team, and then about 10 minutes later, I called him, and sure enough, he was in his car, and we discussed the case. And during the C-section, amniotic fluid got into her bloodstream and caused her to go into cardiac arrest and to bleed profusely, not just from the side of the C-section, but everywhere throughout her body. When we got there, she barely had a blood pressure. Her oxygen level was barely recordable and very, very close to just dying. I explained the situation to her family as best as I could, and then we immediately started working. When we put people on ECMO, uh, they're very, very sick. And then there's Lizzie. Lizzie was already dead, or mostly dead. Dr. Baquetta, what, what are we doing? Because she didn't look like she was even alive. Then he said, Jules, we gotta try. We have to try, we have to give her every chance. We performed an emergency cannulation to get her on the ECMO device, and that helped restore her vital signs to an extent. However, the device flow started to decrease fairly quickly. Dr. Baquetta said, I'm going to have to perform an operation on her. She seems to be bleeding into her body. You're our only hope, so do what you have to. He was able to open up her belly, take out three liters of blood. As soon as we did that, the blood flow on the device picked up and her vital signs uh, were restored. I still had to caution the family that her uh, condition was quite grave and that we had a long road ahead of us. Her heart actually, by the time she got up here, had completely stopped. Her lungs were non-functioning. Her kidneys weren't functioning well, neither was her liver, and she was bleeding profusely from everywhere because she couldn't clot blood. She was completely and utterly dependent on the ECMO for uh, her survival at that point. Dr. Brody said she's the sickest patient in the hospital that we have by far. The support system that we needed is here at New York Presbyterian Columbia. These patients are so complex that unless you have a complete team, along with all of the infrastructure to do it, you can't manage them successfully. There were two stories unfolding at the same time. We were also concerned still with Leo. To have me at the same time in the ICU and him in the NICU, I just shredded them. And just understood what they were going through, knowing that in the end, they could end up going home with nothing. It's very hard to ignore the fact that if we didn't save her, that there would be a child who didn't have a mother. My goal was after he had gone through the PDA surgery, come off the ventilator and back on CPAP, was to see if I could get him over to a four-figure birth weight in about a kilogram. And by the end of my first rotation, we were able to achieve that. When I woke up, I didn't even know I had given birth. Yeah, you have a family. You have a baby and a mommy. Yeah. Her recovery was pretty remarkable. Going from a point of not having virtually any organ function to within about a week, week and a half, most of her organs returning to at least a reasonable function. And then from there, she took off. Okay, here we go. And when he came in, he was only one and a half pounds. You fit in the palm of your hand. Now he's nine pounds, coming home. It's all worth it. This is why we do it. Leah's going to do very well and continue to prosper. The biggest blessing I have is being alive. What limitations do I have? I have nothing thanks to New York Presbyterian.